Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item three is the oath of office to our newly elected board members. Mr. Brandon Atwood. Ernie. And yes, I have the oath of office, and if both new board members would uh, join us, so, okay, just stand uh, if you want to come out here. Do I need to do this again as well? I'll do it. Oh, separately? Oh, yeah, we'd already. No, I'm, we'll do yours. You're right, Scott. We <laughs> gotta do this too. Come on down. See, that's what happens when you've been around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make it official. Okay, if you would raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as member of the Board of Education of the Norwood City School District to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws near now in effect and here and after to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified? The answer is, I do. I do. Thank you. Congratulations to the new welcome of the Scott, I don't know how I went through that. <laughs> and I'm going to have you sign the oath, and we will also get a copy to you as well. So if we return those. the roll call. Please call the roll, Mr. Strasser. Scott Geraci. Here. Bryant. Here. Faulkner. Here. Atwood. Present. Ballard. Here. Item five is the election of president. <coughs> I have um, nominations for president. I nominate Cherry Scott Geraci. Mm -hmm. Second, I second. Any other nominations? Okay, we'll only need the uh, motion now to actually, it was just a motion. Scott nominated um, Jerry Scott Dracy, and we will now need a motion and a second to close nominations. I make a motion to close. I'll second. Mr. Bryant moved. And the second was Mr. Mr. Atwood. Atwood. Thank you. Bryant? Yes. Atwood? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Faulkner? Yes. Scott Dracy? Yes. The next item is the open office to the president. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as the President of the Board of Education of the Norwood City School District, Hamilton County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified? The answer is I do. I do. Thank you. Congratulations. The election of a vice president. May I have nominations for election of a vice president? I nominate Tim Bryant. We have Tim Bryant. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Is there a motion to close nominations? I'll make a motion to close. A second. 
Scott Dracy. Yes. Ballard. Yes. Atwood. Yes. Faulkner. Yes. Bryant. Yes. Go. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as the Vice President of the Board of Education of the Norwood City School District, Hamilton County, Ohio, to the best of your ability, and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified? as I do. I do. Thank you. Item 7 is the appointment of chairpersons and board representatives. The president has the option to make appointments to standing committee. I would like to appoint Scott Faulkner to our finance committee. Amber Ballard to our education committee. <coughs> Tim Bryant to our Building and Grounds, and Brandon Atwood to our Policy Committee. Our Board of Representative for the Great Oaks Board is currently Lynn, and I believe she has two years left. I would like to allow her to stay on as our rep for the Great Oaks Board. That's okay with everyone. And Scott will have communications with her so that we can get reports. The board representative to the Norwood Community Television Board, Scott Faulkner. The board representative as OSBA Legislative Liaison. Ernie, who do we normally have do that? Ken had done that in the past. Okay, I can do that. The OSBA Student Achievement Liaison. Um, Amber, would you be willing to do that? Yes. And the appointment of the treasurer to the Tax Incentive Re Review Council. I nominate Brandon. Well, the treasurer is on that. Oh, so that will be Ernie. Well, then okay. Okay. And then we have the appointment of the public records liaison, which is Heather Cole. May I have a motion for approval of all these appointments? So moved. First by Mr. Faulkner. May I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Ballard. Please call the roll. Faulkner? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Atwood? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Scott Dracy? Yes. Item 8 is the establishment time, date, and location of school board meetings. Um, this year we decided to change it up a little bit and have committee meetings on in different locations around our district. Um, our January meeting, of course, is, is here in the Norwood View Library. Our regular meetings will be held at the Norwood High School Mini Auditorium on January 19th. Our February committee meeting will be at Williams Avenue Elementary Cafeteria, with the February regular meeting being at the High School Mini Auditorium. March committee is at the Middle School Auditorium, and the regular meeting will be at the high school. The April committee meeting will be at the board office, with the regular meeting being in the Middle, middle mini auditorium. The May meeting will be at the board office with the regular meeting being at the mini auditorium. And in June, July, and August, we will have both committee and board meetings at the board office location. September, our committee will be at the board office. October, at the board office. Um, both those locations for regular meetings, all of our regular meetings will be held at the Norwood High School Mini Auditorium. November and December, our committee meetings will be at the board office also. Now I have a motion for approval of all of our committee and board meetings. I'll make a motion. motion <coughs> Mr. Bryant? Can I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Ballard. Any discussion? I um, want to note that the December meeting, um, typically we have meetings on the third Thursday of the month. On December, that will be held on the second Thursday of the month due to the holiday, uh, right up against that schedule. So just to make note that that week will not be the third Thursday. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have one item. So we 
seem to bounce around to every elementary school except for Sharpsburg. And is there any reason why we're not visiting Sharpsburg in this rotation? We did that last month. You did that last month? Yeah, it was last month. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible to schedule that again since Brandon and I did not get a chance to do that? Maybe later yeah. in the year? Possible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I have a motion for approval. Who moved? So moved. Mr. Faulkner, you have a second. A second. Mr. Atwood. Faulkner? Yes. Atwood? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Scott Dracy? Yes. Item 13 is adjournment. I have a motion for adjournment. I'll motion. Also, Mr. Atwood, second by Mr. Ballard. Mr. Atwood, you have a motion for adjournment. Also, Mr. Atwood, second by Mr. Ballard. 546. Atwood? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Faulkner? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Scott Dracy? Yes. I like the new forms. Mm -hmm. That was Artie or Kathy's doing, but I like the new forms. Tax committee? Yeah, that, that doesn't have anything for it. We, we open a meeting for tax committee. But we can do the public hearing next, yes. Okay. Then the committee is not to You don't have a agenda for the tax budget. Hearing. Okay. No, no. Yeah, there's a tax in the middle. There's a public hearing. Is there a folder for that one? Okay, I think I'm the only one that has an agenda. I'll just read it. Yeah. I'll just give it to Cherry. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. Cherry can just choose it. Thank you, oh. Sorry about that. Just in a different location. So if you take one of those, pass it down. Okay. And then the next meeting is the presentation meeting that I have to have a general conference out here as well. Call to order the Norwood Board of Education public hearing agenda for January 9th, 2018. Please call the roll. Atwood. Here. Bryant. Here. Faulkner. Here. Ballard. Here. Scott Dracy. Here. Item three is the annual tax budget for 2018-19 school year. Discussion of the annual tax budget 1819. We are a little bit out of order here. The tax budget is um, Posted to our website, so it is available there as well. I'm going to give you a couple of um, particulars here with respect to the um, the local revenue. In 2018, for the calendar year 2018, we are expecting $15,390,000 in local tax money. Uh, that's a result for the general fund of the levies that um, our taxpayers have approved. We expect that $15,390 to, um, to go to $15,676,000 in calendar year 2019. So we're expecting a little bit of growth there. As I mentioned to you, we had some new construction on commercial property that has helped a little bit to grow that. And we also had a, uh, a little bit of increase in just uh, our overall values as well. As I mentioned earlier, the 
uh, main reason for this tax budget is to address the local tax uh, revenue components. The other two funds that receive local tax money, first the bond revenue fund, which was the levy passed in November 2016. We expect the 2018 revenue from that uh, levy, from the local taxes collected, to be $1,732,000. And we expect a modest increase on that one as well. Keep in mind it's a newer levy and not as much delinquency buildup. Uh, to be one million seven hundred and fifty five thousand in two thousand nineteen now, just as a point to that, if you are keeping a little bit of track there, this is just about balance so in two thousand eighteen uh, we're expecting a little bit of additional state reimbursement. total revenue will be one point eight million one million eight hundred and eighty two thousand and we're expecting expenditures for principal. Debt retirement will be four hundred eighty-five thousand, and interest will be one million two hundred eighty-seven thousand. So we do expect the fund to grow just a little bit, even in this uh, first year of uh, collections and payments. The final fund that receives permanent improvement money uh, is the permanent improvement fund, and we do have a continuing permanent improvement levy that was also passed in November. In the two thousand eighteen calendar year revenue, and again taxes are collected on the calendar year basis. Uh, the 2018 collections are expected to be uh, $935,601, and the 2019 revenue is expected to be $946,916. And as you re may recall, this levy is uh, will also help support the construction project. Uh, it's used simply strictly for capital equipment and building improvement. Those are our three funds. And again, I apologize for not having copies of this. It was my hope to uh, put this up on the screen for you tonight. But um, Mr. Yates did his part, but unfortunately my computer was in about a 20-minute cycle of updates. So uh, when I turned it off from the office and came here. Um, so there is no action now required on that, um, but there is certainly open, Madam President, for comments and uh, further discussion. So on the overall, so we, we, we get our money from two different sources, right? So one's the, the, the Ohio Department of Education income, and then the most of the remaining of it comes from the local tax income. Yes. So what's the split? The split is that we our local tax component is actually the slightly larger part, about 55% of our overall budget. The next significant component to that uh, there is a reimbursement part from the state for those local taxes, and I those are driven. When you look at your tax bill, you'll see a discount on there or a reduction, and that's being paid by the state as part of that reimbursement. So there can be an argument that that's a total local piece as well. Um, and you're quite right. The next largest part um, is our state funding, uh, per pupil funding from the state of Ohio. And then uh, other revenue includes uh, tax incentives, for example that payments from developers and for property in Norwood, and um, that is in the neighborhood of about two and a half million dollars. Repeat that last part again. The tax incentive? Yeah. The, uh, those tax incentive uh, payments that we receive for commercial property that has been uh, incented through city and uh, action, uh, the payments that they make uh, total approximately 200 Two and a half million dollars. So, so this is let, let's say property that the city. I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. Sure. That this is property that the city may have given an abatement on, mm -hmm. but we would still want to negotiate. There's a payment in lieu of taxes. Payment in lieu of taxes. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking. Right. Yeah. Okay. What percentage of our our money comes in from grants currently? Uh, I don't have that number just walking around number because there are a number of funds with grants. We have Title I, Christina uh, Chesson manages a number of grants. We have, for example, 21st Century, the after school program. Uh, but in terms of the total overall, those are not general fund dollars. I don't have that broken out, but I'll be glad to get that for you and send it to you. item is adjournment. May I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Make that motion. Second.
Mr. Atwood and Ms. Ballard. Atwood? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Bryant? Yes. Faulkner? Yes. Scott Geraci? Yes. We are adjourned. <clears throat>
and we're still working on that now. I've invited John Peter, who's um, working very closely on this entire construction project. John, is there anything you'd like to add for the benefit of the to understand about what to do for winter break? Just before winter break, we've got the secondary wall set of doors and the floor of the middle school went to the models. Right as break began, we got the secondary wall of doors at the high school installed. And over break, uh, the company was able to get the access control card readers installed and, and operational uh, at all the school buildings, as well as the controllers at the receptionist desks and able to open those doors as visitors come in. Um, we did have a bit of a glitch as school started last Wednesday with some, uh, the majority of the badges not working properly. Um, we did figure that out and were able to start using the new key fobs that came with the, the contract. Um, so we started programming those and getting them operational and working. Um, that alleviated most of the problems uh, that we ended up with uh, late last week and early this week. Um, there is going to be a training for the door controllers for the receptionists. Um, mostly it's the same type system they're used to working with, um, but it's, it is a different model. So, so we are going to do some training this upcoming Friday on the in-service day. So hopefully we can better understand some of the bells and whistles the new system has in place. Our attention then turns to uh, the next phase of the construction. And that is the middle school. Um, as you know, the middle school will be the first to get the uh, new heating and the new air conditioning system. So right now we're, which they're very excited about the air conditioning. So right now we're in the design stage because in early February, uh, the latest, we really want to go to bid and find out exactly which company it is that will take this. So our charge right now is to get the design part um, as close to absolute perfect as possible so that um, one, we can estimate cost with our architect, but also that we get uh, the best person to bid, for all kinds of people to bid, but to drive up that interest. And then that there are very few uh, change orders after we select someone to uh, carry out the work. So um, that's where we are now. We're actually going to SHP next week to look at a three-dimensional um, rendering uh, on online of the, the work that's proposed. And uh, they have given us multiple uh, hard copies for us to review, and so teams of folks are going through that room by room. Where will the lights be placed? Um, there are drop ceilings presently in this room, so those will be replaced. Where will the projector be? Things of that kind of nature. Um, what toilets and commodes will be replaced? Uh, much of the plumbing um, will be replaced, and of course, uh, plumbing fixtures. John, is there anything you would add to help them to understand the magnitude of the middle school project, which is actually why we started there, because the magnitude we anticipate is... Um, there's, there's probably 50% roofing issues that will be included in that. Um, yeah, the heating and cooling aspects, like you mentioned. Um, are there any accessibility updates we such as the elevator that is about that big. We find yes. wheelchair ramps. And yes. Like An elevator is part of the plan. Okay. Yes, it is. A much larger elevator. Not in the present place of the one we have now. Um, right now it's proposed, if you were facing the auditorium, it's in that set of windows to your right. So not in the auditorium, but in the main hallway. Okay. And it will run, uh, there's kind of a, yeah, there's an area there um, that we think will host that very nicely. Where will the outside entrance be then? So interesting you bring that up. So we considered um, that will go from, of course, the bottom floor to the third floor. And so the entrance to that would be, I was getting confused, is that the girls' entrance? The girls' entrance. It's the girls' entrance. Okay, so we'll be doing the girls' entrance. And, and then there'll be a ramp. Room. Yep. So right now there are two present wood doors. Um, instead of going up the steps, there are two wood doors there that take you down to the functioning part of the building. Um, that would be made into a hallway where you could access the uh, elevator there. And we're excited about the potential of what that elevator will mean for the students who are there now and all those that are coming. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, for all the guests that come there to use to be in the auditorium, 
for concerts and things of that nature? Um, I do have a couple of questions. So, with the scope of the middle school project, we are looking at going to bid in February, is that correct? That's right. So, has SHP, um, which I guess is our general contractor, the architect for this, have they advised us what we think a competitive bid is going to look like in this project? That's the process we're in right now. Okay. Um, and we're looking at each individual item as to how much that would cost. And we're deciding what's more important. For example, the elevator is very important to us. Right. So we're we're figuring out what what really is extraordinarily important and how can we get the job accomplished. So um, SHP is the architect. They are not the general contractor. Okay. Not at all the general contractor. That's what we will bid for. Okay. You're, so we're going to bid for a general contractor. That's right. Okay. I just want to make sure I. No, that's a good, great question, and there is a huge distinction between the two. Mm -hmm. Um. So if it goes to bid in February, we're hoping to have qualified bids back by what, mid-March? April, maybe? It usually only takes two or three weeks by the time we start getting the bids back in. The, the uh, projected construction timeline is that they would begin in early May. Okay. And um, what we're working on now is, um, as you know, that building is being used right. by many students, right. not just during the school day, but well into the evening. So the, the challenge is um, keeping it operational, but yet making way for an entire section. So in the plans right now, the entire west wing, again, these are the plans right now, the entire west wing and portions of the front of the building will be, um, they'll be working on them right away in May, okay. and they will be ready for us to be using them August the 17th. So um, here's some, a couple of groups of students that will need to move out of the way for that construction to begin in early May. Gotcha. So then when that's completed, that will be air conditioned and heated, and of course we'll move the, we'll the, the residents of the building over to the other side, and then we'll work on that other side. Okay. And then as the construction plans, as you know, the board has approved that um, that once those folks are able to move over, they can, can work on the east side of the building. And then before we go to bid for all of the elementaries, we have the opportunity to move those sixth graders up to alleviate some space in the elementary so that so construction can, the can take place there. Right. Exactly. Instead of setting up tents all over the place. Right. Right, right. right now, sixth graders coming down. They will in two years for right. construction purposes. And, and I'm the sure they'll be really eight. excited to have the air conditioning. Sure, the next uh, item on here is uh, the discussion item of the grant writer. And Mr. Atwood, I'll return to you. Um, you wanted to discuss the potential of a uh, grant writer for the district. Absolutely. So, um, as I was reviewing um, some documents that Ernie had, had passed over to me uh, when I was preparing for this position, you know, I took notice that the state of Ohio considers our district to be a wealthy district, um, even though the average salary income for for the average family is not reflective of that. It's because we have higher property values than the surrounding districts. And because of that, um, the funding that we typically, or a lower income earning district would get from the state is reduced because you rely more on those, on those incomes. So, you know, right now our financial situation looks looks okay, but as we start looking down in a, in a couple of years, um, we're going to start trending off towards close to, to break even. Um, and without having to go back to the taxpayers and say, hey, we need, we need more money in order to keep ourselves uh, in a growing position, you know, how do we prolong that process? And something that a lot of other districts are starting to do, and it's, it's been a trend that I've research that has been going this way for about 10 years now, is a lot of other districts are starting to employ or actually put on their staff a, a position of a grant writer. Now this is a um, full-time salary position and then this person would almost act as a support role for other teachers and other people and, and this person would have experience and knowledge 
to navigate the grant writing process to increase our chances of winning more money back into the districts. And there is a lot of different ways that, and a lot of different programs out there that you could go out and get money for. Now we have some great grant programs already established in the district. You know, the absolutely the 21st century is, is, is one thing. Um, but what we're doing right now is we're relying on current staff members to take part of their time outside of their duties to do this. And I think it would be a better service to the district if, if we actually looked at our organizational structure and say, can we find a permanent position for somebody who does nothing but that? The risk is, the risk is, is that yes, we are going to increase our um, employee count by one. So we're going to hire somebody, we're going to pay them a salary, and we're also going to pay them benefits. That's the risk to the district. But the benefit is, is that this person could potentially bring in, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars a year that could augment some of the other programs, tremendous programs that we have. So this is something I wanted to bring up now early, because I think the sooner that we decide whether or not this is the direction we want to go in, if this is a direction that the board wants to go in, you know, we start navigating the process of how this person fits in to our organization, um, you know, what this position would ultimately look like, um, and, and start the process of, of actually going out and you know, outsourcing that person. So I, I leave it open to discussion with my fellow board members. I mean, I'm in favor of this. I think this is a great opportunity. Um, I know the New Richmond district, uh, is doing something extremely similar to this, and they were able to get smart boards for just about all of their classrooms through through somebody who had, had participated in the program. Like this. So there's there's all kinds of opportunity. Do you know about what a base salary would look like, uh, and then maybe possible commission? So that that's a great point, and I have done some research on that. So um, a typical base salary for a grant writer in this region would fall anywhere between forty to seventy thousand dollars a year, um, depending on experience. And commission is extremely frowned upon. So a lot of grant program awarders um, don't want to award grant money to somebody who's going to be directly profiting from it. So commission is frowned upon. But you said benefits as well. Well, also and, and, you know, package. Yeah, okay. insurance, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I know we've looked at this in the past, and and the problem, and actually, Deb Robinson, when she was brought on, Deb writes, Chris writes, and somebody else writes. Laura, writes. Laura, Laura Ferguson yeah. writes, right? So I, I know we have several that do it, and then the problem we get into is when we, because I think it's a great idea. I think it's something we need to consider really heavily. But if we do it, we need to dedicate the person to it and not put them with other tasks because once we get them in and start doing other tasks, we rely on them to do other things and then the next thing you know, they're a part-time grant writer. No, it's, I, I don't. I would not want to see a part-time grant writer. If we do this, I would want this person to have full jurisdiction of our grant programs. And, you know, I think we would find out very quickly within a couple of years if this program or this person is successful because if they're doing their job, then you know, we're getting a lot of grant income money into the district, not many programs. If they're sitting on their thumbs, then we're going to know really quickly. Now, would this person also be someone that teachers could reach out to for assistance in writing, class, That's, like, smaller classroom grants? So, in my mind, I would see this person kind of a, like in a support role, right? I don't know if they would necessarily fall <laughs> under the NTA agreement. I, they would probably more likely fall under the other support staff agreement, but this is somebody teachers could come to and say, hey, I have, I know of a great grant opportunity. I'm not experienced in this. You're here as a resource for me to use. But plus, this would be a person that would go to the teachers and say, hey, here's some great opportunities for you. And it would work vice versa. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So now we would, we put a like a give them like a two year contract, three year contract. I mean, because if not, this could be something you could hire somebody and then uh, kind of stuck contract. with them. R right. I, yeah. I would definitely recommend a two or yeah. three year contract. I think a one year contract doesn't do them any service. Right. Um, I think I think a two year would probably 
be beneficial. I, I would defer to Kathy on that, though. How would that fall in a position like this? Where would that fall into? Do you have any idea? I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be able... person would likely um, work very closely with regard to our curriculum because, as we know, programming is wonderful, mm -hmm. but we want it to support the work that we're already um, graded on. Right. So we would certainly want that to represent in ways that it could help us. Um, you know, you mentioned smart boards. We have smart boards right now, but so we would look at other ways. For example, I think the State Department put out um, an opportunity for, was it $35 million that mm -hmm. they're willing to give away this next year? striving readers agreement, so mm -hmm. we have an intent to apply. We, right. We are applying for that. Right. And that's that could potentially impact preschoolers through I think eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and we received race through the top grant. We did. Which was huge. Gear up. We did. The gear up grant. Um, we did over mm -hmm. nine hundred currently for after school programming. Right. right. We received um, one point six for federal programming currently. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of little grants that we piece together for um, different like safe routes to school that you've heard people talk about, smaller grants, but they all add up and make a difference. Um, our collaboration with um, the so Children's Hospital has been yeah. um, instrumental in so many ways. Um, mm -hmm. We have some grants for them, but we also have people for them, and we certainly we have a physician from them, so mm -hmm. there's some other things that are going on that are supported with grant funding. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the safe routes to school, that's done strictly through Hamilton County, right? That's just something that's going to, we're going to benefit from it, from work being done. No, we, we relied in collaboration with the city of Hollywood right. to the, um, what's the organization at the state level? The, all the ODOT? Way. ODOT. Yeah, yes. Right. So it's not through the county, but it's all the way straight to the, the state mm -hmm. level. And that's been a little bit at a time, a little, um, as we've done a plan, we have a small planning grant, we had a small, you know, like each phase we've applied for different pockets of funding to support our work with Safe Rounds. Right. Okay. Ms. Robison spearheaded that event, uh, not only wearing the hat as a school person, but also as a city resident. Mm -hmm. We've been extraordinarily fortunate um, in most of what we applied for we're able to get. Which yeah. is fantastic. We've had straight A grants yeah. um, that we work that have been through in collaboration with Hamilton County. Maybe that's one you're thinking of. We've had some nice five year grants. We certainly have a gear up grant, a seven year grant that has right. changed um, so much of our work at the high school level and helping students prepare for what's to come after they graduate. Right. Yeah. Is there any indication on, on gear up about a follow up grant to that? Is that going to. No, they, from the beginning, they've said you were our chosen. Um, when they wanted to partner with us, and it's seven years. And then the, the indication is that they want us to keep what's most powerful to us. So we know learning this process what's been the best part of it, but they won't be offering it again. But that doesn't mean there won't be something else that comes its way. Um, and Deb is, Deb is a good leader in that regard, because good things do come to you once other organizations see you use their work, their money wisely mm -hmm. and you do good programming. So good things come our way sometimes, even when we don't expect it, because of our good work and uh, that we're good stewards of those fundings that we've had opportunities for. When does that seven years run out? Um, okay, so the current This is the third year, I yeah. think. Third year? Yeah, yeah, so we've got four left. So, so actually the timing of, of this could actually be pretty beneficial like we could piggyback off of that and then if this newly created position I mean that could be one of their things is to find the good thing to come after the, the gear up grant goes away there's always so many grants that go unclaimed every year and I'm sure that our teachers with as busy as they are don't always have time to go out and fish for those things so having someone to be able that literally just goes out and finds these lost monies would be really helpful yeah it might be something that we want to um, look to other school districts because you mentioned a school district does it. Maybe it would be a good research opportunity for us to see what's going on with other districts and just compare. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to rush into this. I want to take our time, but um, but I definitely, you know, think it's worthwhile. Well, I think you know Amber's question about the gear up the, the percentage of grant money that's out there. I think seeing that's going to. It's going to help see what percentage of our, our income is actually grant money and what percentage we, we've applied for maybe that we, we didn't get and or we're missing out there. I don't know if that's possible. 
but we can see that that may be helpful. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Madam President, I did want to bring up uh, with regard to the Education Committee report a uh, number of items. Are we ready for those? Mm -hmm. um, the first one is um, as you can know, we're already preparing for next school year. So we have the approval of the Norwood High School program of study, and that was given to you as an exhibit. Um, and then uh, also we will be asking for approval of the following field trips. Our winter guard, of course, is winter guard season, so there will be a number of places where they'll be competing. Our silhouettes um, will also be competing in a number of places. And our middle school orchestra uh, will be going to a Trails and Thrills music festival. And then, of course, we're already working on our top conferences for next school year, and those dates there are also listed. Any questions? I do. I, I have I have a question. So we're considering these competitions field trips? Yes. They are. They are considered field trips because mm -hmm. they're more than 25 miles away from the school district. So anything that is over that has to be approved for Okay. So and just just a question. So the previous league that we participated in, not the Miami Valley Conference, but the Southern Buckeye Conference, there were a number of schools that were outside of that 25 mile radius. Were we approving field trips for the basketball team to go to Blanchester? No, no. Okay. No, we wouldn't. All right. What's, but that, that would be a competition again. That's part of the league that we belong to. Right. These are isolated events and they're held in different places from year to year. Oh. So for example, the high school winter guard competition this year it may be in Waynesville. Next year it could be in Little Miami. Okay. Um, and these are not organizations that are part of the our conference that we're in. Okay. So this is not athletics at all. Right. Okay. It's completely separate. Same with the silhouettes. A lot of their competitions are held in different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, many of them are more than 25 miles away. Okay. Great question. Thank you. Next item. Okay. Personnel. So uh, there are some personnel recommendations for approval uh, later this month that you'll be voting on. Uh, the first one is a student assistant educational aid. Um, also, we have some supplemental contracts. We're trying to take care of our spring sports and get those folks in place. And Avenues for Success has some club advisors that they also need to bring formally on board. And um, when someone is not already part of our certified staff, we put in there what you see number three, and that is non-certified coaches. Um, so we have um, an athletics, um, a varsity uh, winter chair meeting, and middle school winter chair meeting. And then uh, last month we did accept Tyler Alsop's resignation, but we want to change that resignation date from 2017 to 2018. Mm. He left us so he could do his student teaching experience. Oh, perfect. And that concludes our uh, my recommendations for personnel. Questions? Discussion? All right. Item three is the policy committee report. Um, you want to say that or Kathy, you want to go ahead That's and just brand. go through it? We're just simply trying to respond and make sure that we're giving all of our graduates opportunities to graduate. And so we are updating. There were a few changes in the graduation requirements. Christina, help me recall. So two, there were two. Social studies is the area was impacted. We currently have um, four, four units of social studies required of all of our students. And we'd like to make that three. It doesn't reduce our overall amount. Our overall amount for graduates is still 21 electives. But what it does do, we've noticed when some of our students attend JBS, um, especially a special needs student or a student perhaps who wanted to do ROTC, they run out of time in their schedule. And that social studies requirement, ours was above and beyond what the state requires. And that, that seemed to be what the hiccup was. They always got caught in not having enough um, time in their day to fulfill our fourth requirement of social studies. They could get their 21 hours because their day is full, 
but for those students, our, some of our special needs students that needed another bell to do a, a skills studies class to provide them some in-depth intervention, and also some students that wanted to do other specialized programming like ROTC, this would allow their schedule to be a little more free. Um, they still would have three, correct, three units of social studies as required by the state, 21 credits as we are requiring, um, which is one credit over the, stu the current state requirement. So still in line with our, our credits overall, but just allowing a little freedom. Most of our students here at Norwood that are with us from freshman year to senior year will have four credits of social studies through our elective process, but this does allow some freedom so that students go, don't get caught in a trap, um, which is what we were finding. And a handful of them each year we had to do a lot of problem solving to help them find their way to graduation, whether it be an online course, some summer work, and it just wasn't quite right for a student. So we're still in line with the state. We still are one credit above the state, just allowing for a little flexibility. If this is fine with you, what we would do between now and the board meeting is update that program of studies so that it quickly reflects this intent, because otherwise, the program of studies that you approve will not be correct. But we wanted to bring this up tonight to make sure there weren't any questions. And if you say, oh, it's looking fine, then we'll start to make that adjustment so our program of studies that you would approve on Thursday would reflect these changes as well, all in one night. Right, and, and that change is in the attachment that you sent, correct? Okay. It is. It is. Yeah. By any chance, does the graduation requirement yet include civil service hours, uh, community service of any kind. I think it, it used to for honors, but does it, it require that for general graduation? It, does, some it, districts it does not require for general graduation. Okay. Um, we've seen it being woven into some of our coursework, but not as a requirement, as a standalone requirement. Okay. It is um, currently, it is um, considered a pathway your senior year if you do not have all your 18 points to do some community service over 100, 120 hours. So that's where they um, indicate their kind of their importance of that, but it's not an official requirement of all graduating seniors like you might have seen a few years ago. Okay. okay. Who would I reach out to about uh, discussion of opportunities for community service? I'm probably a good person to start with okay. um, because I could share kind of the things we do. Okay. And then depending on your target audience, which is probably high school, mm -hmm. we would work with the high school and they kind of outline in more detail what we currently already um, have going on. Um, because we do weave it in, we weave it in a great deal in our after school programming. It's part of our commitment. And then during the school day, there are small opportunities for that, mm -hmm. mostly with um, some of our honors kids. Okay. I, I have a few ideas I'd love to discuss yeah, with you. That would be fantastic. Okay. Thank you. All right, on to the Building and Grounds Committee report. Uh, yes, Madam President, we've got two, uh, so right now, two uses for this uh, facility would be uh, Nord uh, Police Department Civil Service Exam, February 8th, and the Ohio Valley Football Association, Association uh, would be August, th August 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th, and September 10th. Any questions or discussion? Yes. Item five is the finance committee report. Um, on the agenda, we will have the approval of the financial reports as listed. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the reports, those are all standard for this month. Okay. You did receive the treasurer's report as an exhibit. Uh, forecast update, we're trending in line with expectations. Our actual versus estimated is uh, where we expected. The expenditures are trending a little bit better than anticipated. Some of that has to do with some special education costs, so we'll continue to monitor that, but hopefully that will turn out to be uh, some positive news for us uh, by the end of June. I, uh, we, you also see two more items on there that uh, is the OSBA annual membership dues. That's annual. Uh, process that you go through to approve that and then also we have two board members uh, attending a new board member training I think that's this month I remember right mm -hmm. so we welcome that and are glad that they're able to uh, take time out of their schedules to do that uh, it's important 
work, and we appreciate it. So finally, I want to hand out just a couple of items. Uh, this first, and this is just a kind of a refresher for those of you who have been on board. But if you remember, about two, two and a half years ago, we talked to you about the Ohio Checkbook Program, which is a program uh, sponsored by State Treasurer Josh Mandel. And we were one of the early schools to get involved in that uh, in terms of this area. And I just want to uh, present to you again the web page is on there, the procedures for logging in, and we have our information uh, go into that process every month, and you are able to find out uh, uh, individual check information, individual expenditure information, and also see how we are using our dollars on that. So I think it's a great resource for both uh, the public uh, and obviously for our board members as well, and it's a great um, a tool of transparency. The second one, we, uh, we went over this with you several months ago, it's a program called OnBase. And again, I have the website and had uh, login information, although we did find this afternoon that there was uh, some issue with the, the password that we had established for that, so we're, we're going to get that fixed. But this program goes even farther. So if you want to see an actual uh, documentation for uh, the support documentation for a board check, in fact, it's a little bit hard to read this small print, I acknowledge, but uh, the check that's highlighted here is actually one that's on the check register that you have uh, as part of this month's packet. So it gives you the opportunity to go in and uh, look at those for yourself, but I also want to remind you at any point in time, and new board members give us the opportunity to do that, you don't have to do it that way either. If you have specific questions about anything, uh, just email me and let me know. We'll, we'll research it and get the information. And the one homework item that I have, and we'll invite Christina's help on that, is to, because it's going, it is, we don't have a code that shows Here's every single grant, but we have a number of grants already, and I'll need some help uh, actually identifying some of those. The total I can get, but we'll need some help with that. But we'll get that out to you in the next few days. That's all I have. Any other discussion items or comments? Um, I have one quick question. The, the uh, annual membership dues mm -hmm. for the OSBA, mm -hmm. is that something we take care of, or is that something that comes out of that general funding that we were talking about at the beginning? No, it, it comes out of the school district funding. Our membership dues come out of that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I want to welcome our new board members, and I think we can make a motion to adjourn. We stand adjourned at 6.31 p.m. <laughs>